Hey everybody, this is uh, Mr. Munson, and we are in uh, Unit 6 course, similar figures, similar polygons, all the kind of same stuff. Uh, we're in Section 6.3, uh, Concept Number 3, Similar Triangles, and basically we're going to look at some shortcuts. Let's get started. You know, one of the things that we want to look at is just make sure that we understand what we're talking about. So if I take a look at this triangle here and I, I grab it and through the software here, I can copy it. Um, actually, let me clone it so it's exactly the same, right? And I take it and I stretch it and I make it bigger and it keeps the aspect the same. What ends up happening is the angle at the top here and the angle at the top here stay congruent. You know, this looks like a right. Matter of fact, because of the software, I chose the right triangle. That's going to stay right. And finally, these two, okay? So these two triangles, um, first of all, have three sides, so you definitely know they could possibly be similar. And then um, looking at the angles, um, there, um, there's a corresponding angle on the left that matches the one in the right. Now, with the sides, because of the way I um, used the software to enlarge it, I made it twice or three times as big. So this side over here is now a 9, and this side here is a 12, and this side over here is a 15. And so if we, if we wrote a ratio between any pair of the corresponding sides, what we'd find out is that all those ratios once reduced, would end up being 1 over 3, okay? So that's a fundamental thing about similar uh, figures is that the ratio between the corresponding sides all have to be the same. 3 ninths reduces to 1 third, 4 twelfths, 5 fifteenths, all reduced down to the same fraction, okay? Or decimal if I'm doing it that way, okay? Now, if we just look at these two triangles and we ask ourselves, are these two triangles similar? You know, we start off looking, first of all, the number of sides. I mean, that's the real basic thing, and we can do that in our head, and we can see that there's three sides, so we can continue on. Now, let's look at the angles. If we look at the angles, we see that, um, sure enough, there is a 60 in this one, and there's a 60 in, in this one, and it matches up, but this one over here on the right does not have a 90. So it fails this test. And so what I know immediately is I don't need to go any further. These two triangles are not similar. Now, likewise, if I had um, gotten through the the angles and that all matched up for some reason, um, I would look at the sides. So I would take the corresponding sides and match them up. Uh, I know because this is an equilateral or an equiangular triangle, all the angles are the same, then all the sides are the same, right? So I would start writing ratios between the sides. So, I, you know, 12 is to 12 square root 3. And I don't know why I would match it up with that one because there's, you know, I match it up smallest to smallest, but they're all different. So as we can see just from this uh, first uh, idea, these two ratios cannot at all possibly be the same. If I took 12 and divided by 12 square root 3 and then took 12, the same number, divided by 24, I'm certainly going to get different numbers. So what ends up happening is Right from the very beginning here, these two ratios are not equal to each other. And so from that position, it also fails um, the side proportionality idea, okay? So no chance of these triangles being similar. Now, what I want to do is I want to focus this today's lesson on how to show triangles are similar uh, with some minimum amount of information. So we have three shortcuts that we're going to be looking at in this section. <clears throat> They look and, and kind of feel like um, some shortcuts we use in congruent triangles. Um, the first one, though, is not a even similar to anything that we did in congruence. That's angle-angle similarity. And so I put the similarity sign after it, and we you have to do as well so that we know you're talking about similar, not congruent. Okay? So angle-angle similarity basically says I have two triangles where in both sets of triangles there's two sets, two sets of angles that are congruent. And if that's the case, then the idea of the triangles being similar comes true. That means all the sides become proportional, the missing angle is congruent, and all those things, okay? Side, side angle side similarity is the second one I want to look at, okay? So it's two sets of sides that are proportional. And that means that when I write a ratio between the these um, corresponding um, sides, that ratio, those two ratios will equal each other. And then finally, that included angle, and remember, it has to be stuck between the two sides. Um, that included angle is congruent. Remember, in the world of similarity, sides, we're interested in sides being proportional and angles being congruent. Okay, and then so finally, with that idea, we have side, side, side. And side, side, side similarity is three sets of sides that are proportional. Okay, so let's just take a look at that real quick. 
some examples. So when we look at this problem right here, we um, have two triangles, and um, I'm, I'm looking to see if these are um, similar. And I'm here to tell you they're going to be by angle angle similarity. And so let's look at a problem like this. Pretend like we don't we don't have this yet, and we're trying to discover it. Okay. So definitely um, we know by vertical angles these are congruent. So we have one pair. This is going to be 35 degrees over on this side. Okay. All right. Well, um, I don't see a hundred in the the right hand side, and I don't see a 45 in the other side. And the inexperienced student would walk away and say, "Yeah, these triangles don't have enough information for angle angle similarity." Similarity, but you're different. You're going to know before you make any kind of judgment about triangle. You're going to find all the angles, and you can use do that by doing the triangle sum theorem. So you know, in the left hand triangle, you have a hundred and a 35. So you have 135 spent of 180. Do a little math, and you find that this is actually a 45 degree angle. And so what we discover is there's a pair of angles here that are congruent and a pair of angles here that are congruent. And that's enough to determine that these two triangles are similar. This is really important because once they're similar, we know that then their sides are proportional and we're going to be writing equations and things like that. The other thing is it allows us to know that even though this is 100 degrees up here, um, this one has to be 100 down here, uh, just by the fact that since they're similar, there's always a matching angle for it, right? We could also determine that by uh, what we you know from pa past conversations, the third angle theorem. The third angle theorem says if I have two triangles, two angles in one and two angles in another are congruent, then the third ones have to be congruent. How about this one? Now we're looking to see if this is a case of side angle side. Um, now you're going to walk into like a problem like this and I'm going to say, hey, are these two triangles similar? And that would be a response. Let's see if that's true. So I have a pair of angles that are congruent and those two angles that are congruent are between two sides I'm going to analyze. So I'm going to take the three in the left triangle and I'm going to compare it to one of the sides and the other one. Now I could put 12 underneath it or 16, but the experienced player would say, if I have any chance of this being similar, since three is smaller than four, then I'm going to pair it up with the smaller of the 12 and the 16. So 12 goes down here. Okay. So then let's take a look at four over 16. So one way of looking at this is just reducing these fractions, right? That becomes one fourth. This is also one fourth. And so those two fractions are the same. That would be one way of looking at it. Another way would be plugging them into the calculator, 3 over 12, 3 divided by 12, and you find it's both of them are 0.25. The last way that you could look at is ask yourself, are these are these equal to each other? Sometimes we can just do some simple math in our head. We don't have to actually find out. 3 times 16 is 48, and 4 times, four, or four times 12 is 48. So whenever we cross multiply, they both equal the same number. Lots of ways to show that things, two ratios, are the same. Reduce it, turn it into a decimal, or cross multiply. So we have a pair of uh, sides that are proportional. The fract their ratios are equal to each other. So by side, angle, side, similarity, these two triangles are similar. So the last one here is side, side, side similarity. And again, you're going to walk in without that, and I'm going to ask you, and if, are these triangles similar and by what method? You're going to throw in side, side, side similarity. So this is how you go about it. So again, I'm going to write for this, for this, um, for this to happen, I have to find that the sides are proportional. So when I say that statement, you need to click in your brain. What he's saying is all the ratios between their corresponding sides have to equal each other. Okay, so let's grab from the left and put over to the right. So I'm going to take that seven, which by the way is the smallest side on that on that triangle, and I'm going to match it up to the smallest side on the other triangle. Um, largest one is 12, so I'm going to match it up with the largest one over here, and then that leaves me with 9 and 45 to go together. Now I'm going to look at these ratios, and if they end up being exactly the same, then by side-side similarity, these two triangles are similar. So lots of different ways to check this. I could plug each one of them in the calculator and see what they turn out as decimals. And if they're all the same, and they were, I made a mistake when writing this one down. If they're all the same, then that makes them proportional. All those ratios are the same. I could reduce each of the fractions and see if they feather out to be the same, and they do, and then that means that they're proportional and that they're, the two triangles are similar. One of the ways I could do it is I could take 7 25ths and ask myself, is that the same as 9 over 45? Now this one I think is a little bit harder to do, but just because I'm dealing with such big numbers, and I could cross multiply and see if they end up 
generating the same numbers. Then I would take 9 over 45 and check it with 12 sixtieths. And if that generates the same numbers, um, then these two uh, sets are proportional. In other words, all three of them are proportional. Um, I think it's just easier to turn them into decimals if that's your case. Um, when they're bigger numbers like that, when they're smaller, I can cross multiply and find them real quick. All right, let's take a look at some examples. Okay, so let's take a look at uh, this um, idea over to, to the right. What I love about this example is it's really a real-world situation. You could do this this weekend. Uh, if, you, if you had a really tall tree in your house, you could, you could completely blow away the rest of your family and tell them how tall that tree is without ever climbing it. It's a very simple process. What you have to see is pretend like this is a person standing here. Okay, their height is two meters, and they cast a shadow of three millimeter or three meters okay so that's one of the triangles then there's a second triangle that is there that's this bigger triangle okay that bigger triangle represents the tree height in its shadow of 30 feet right 30 meters i'm sorry and so with that information we should be able to find out how high the tree is, as long as we can come to a conclusion that the two triangles are similar. And that's easy to do. Let me show you what I mean. I know that down here in this corner, there's this angle right here. This angle right here is the same as that angle right there. And in the bigger triangle, it's the same angle right there. So right now we have a pair of angles that are congruent. Now, hopefully you're an upright standing human being. And so when you stand up, you form a right angle. So we'll put a right there. And then if you look here, hopefully the tree is standing upright and it forms a right. So by angle, angle similarity, I know these two triangles are similar. If I couldn't come up with that idea, I can't go to this next step. And that is, since they are similar, I can write a proportion. So I'm going to compare the sides. Now this down here is 30, so we'll put that one in there. So I have 2 is to the height, right? The height of the tree and my height are related to 3, my shadow, in its shadow. Cross multiply, and I solve, and I find that x is equal to, or height is equal to, 20 meters. Okay? So there you go. Okay, that's pretty much it. Um, so let's go ahead and have you write the word summary. Write a quick summary. You got three um, shortcuts. Maybe write a summary about the three shortcuts. Draw your line for next time. And let's look at the do it problems. All right, so I'm going to zoom those in so you can see them a little bit better. And I'll scroll through these for you. Put me on pause and just look at them. Sorry for the, they're kind of bunched up here. Remember, these review problems are for you, right? You're to review these problems. We're trying to eliminate the, the amount of material at the end of the year that you have not seen for a while. By doing these problems, go back and look at your formula sheets. Go back and look at your notes for these units. Maybe look at your student learning map, and you might find in the student learning map where these I can statements are that address these things like classifying triangles by their sides and angles. And you can just quickly go to that section in your notes. All right. See you next time.